Shields up, Iron Breakers. Welcome back to Granble Fantasy Relink, and today I'm going to be bringing you my Oigan Guide. This was actually requested by quite a few of you in my other Granble Fantasy Relink videos, so I figured I'd go ahead and share my experience playing this character, which is also the character I spent the most time with when it comes to progressing the end game. As per usual with my guides, there are going to be chapters in this video, so feel free to check the timeline if you want to skip to a different section of the video, like if you're more interested in checking out the sigils that I'm using, the weapons that I I recommend the over masteries and all of that stuff just click any of the sections in the video and bob's your uncle but anyways let's get things started by talking about the basics now i am playing on playstation 5 so i am going to be referring to playstation 5 inputs if you're playing on pc you're going to have to check your key bindings to figure out okay which button shoots which button throws grenades which button is for link attacks and for jumping and all of that stuff you guys are going to figure that stuff out for yourselves okay now Getting things started, how does Oigan work? Well, you can shoot stuff using square, and you can throw grenades using triangle. Again, there's two attack types. Check your key bindings to see the two different attack types. You can also jump. You can also press circle for link attack like every other character. You can also lock on by pressing L2 or whatever button happens to be on PC, guard by pressing L1, and dodge by pressing R2. One of the things that I want you to pay attention and maybe even get into the habit to when it comes to Oigan is guarding. Oigan doesn't really have a counter. There are several characters in this game that have counters or invincibility spells where they can become invincible and skip a bunch of mechanics. Oigan doesn't have any of that. You're going to have to deal with all the mechanics that are getting thrown at you. However, you also have the advantage of being at range and being able to shoot things in the face when they get too close or even throw the occasional grenade at them. Now... Having said that, one of the things that you need to pay attention to is that just because you can shoot doesn't mean you should just shoot from this position because one of Oigan's mechanics is sniper mode. If you keep the shoot button pressed, which is square, you're going to go into sniper mode. And notice that if I shoot him in sniper mode, it deals more damage. So obviously one of your objectives is going to be find a safe spot in every fight and stick to sniper mode, shoot the crap out of your target. Although, you don't just shoot the crap out of your target, you're going to throw a grenade at it. Oh, that grenade is different. Yeah, grenades in sniper mode are grenade plus. They stick to your target, and then you shoot them, and they explode, and they deal more damage. Because if you pay attention, if we throw a grenade here, that's going to be 300,000 damage. If we throw a grenade here, and then detonate it, that's going to be 400,000 damage. Again, these numbers are going to vary depending on what place you're at with the progression of the game and all that right but Oigan's main damage rotation by the time you get the end game is basically going to be throw three grenades this is when you get your masteries up to snuff you're going to be able to throw three grenades at the same time shoot them and they detonate each other right and this is going to be your bread and butter. I know that he's got the big laser skill, the big detonator skill. And a lot of you guys might be thinking, oh, but I want to use the skills and deal all of this damage. From all of the testing that I've done so far, I find that the most effective way of dealing damage with Oigan is doing this. You stack three grenades, blast them. Stack three more grenades, blast them again. This is your bread and butter when it comes to basics. Naturally, when you're earlier in the game, you're going to be, oh, I'll throw in a grenade. Boom. Now, one of the things that some of you guys might even start struggling with when it comes to sniper mode is the fact that Oigan shoots his gun by pressing square, which is a little bit unintuitive. Usually when you have an aim mechanic like this, you're going to want to press, you know, your right trigger. Again, PC players probably don't suffer from any of this because you're probably using mouse aiming and that probably makes Oigan completely busted like he's already a super powerful character if you add mouse aiming into the mix I can only imagine the ridiculous precision that you get with this character and how beast he gets however for those of us playing on controller one of the things you'll notice is that aiming with right stick and then shooting with square is not super intuitive it's kind of wonky you have to like stop moving your aim shoot stop moving your aim shoot it's not very good however they thought of this, and therefore they also allow you to aim with the left stick. Now I know, it's not the most intuitive thing ever, but it's not that hard either. You should be able to get used to it fairly quickly, because that way you can shoot while you're aiming, and you can keep up with your targets, which is what you want to do. You don't want to be aiming with the right stick and then stopping to shoot. That just doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? So again... The rotation is the same, you just go ahead, throw grenades, but if your target is moving, you can use left stick to adjust your aim on the fly. Now another thing that you can do is you can also throw those most 
those more powerful grenades that you have in sniper mode if you keep the grenade button pressed. See how it charged up the grenade and made that little sound? You can then throw the grenade wherever you want, and you can also lock on to your target by pressing the lock on button, and it will just target that, and it will throw a more powerful grenade, and then you can even just like shoot it with a regular shot, and it will explode, deal all of the damage as if it was thrown in sniper mode, but without you actually entering sniper mode. That is an option that you have. However, I wouldn't really recommend relying too much on this because fundamentally it takes you a lot longer to throw grenades like this than it does if you happen to be in sniper mode. Like if you'll notice you go into sniper mode, it's like one grenade, two grenades, three grenades, boom. One grenade, two grenades, three grenades, boom, right? But do be aware that that is an option. Another thing that you can also do with Oigen is you can come up close and personal and you can punch things. I wouldn't really recommend that. Oigen's not the best at dealing melee damage and his combo is just like these three attacks. I mean, you can do these three attacks and then throw a grenade if you want to, I guess. But fundamentally, this is not something you're going to be doing that often. When you're playing Oigen, you're playing for sniper mode, okay? Unless you happen to be leveling up an Oigen to be used as an NPC or something like that, which, by the way... Oigen as an NPC is an absolute beast. I've had sessions where I'm playing me plus two other friends, and so I bring in Oigen to be like a support. Not really a support, but, you know, just a, the fourth character in there. And he will just straight up snag MVPs away from us because he's an absolute beast. So do keep that in mind. But yeah, if you are actually playing Oigen, your objective is going to be get into sniper mode, shoot, you know, shoot stuff throw grenades at stuff, so on and so forth. And some of you guys might be wondering, but can I not just shoot stuff instead of throwing grenades? You can, but the damage always appears to come from throwing grenades. This includes even if you use some of his other more powerful skills and whatnot, I just find that throwing grenades and detonating them is bread and butter. This is why the specific skills that I tend to use are more so fire and forget skills so that I can go back into my rotation. Now, another thing that you need to keep in mind is... Whenever you have to exit sniper mode, there's two ways to exit sniper mode. One of them is dodging, and this is going to be the one that most people default to because we have this mentality where we're like, oh, I need to dodge everything so that I don't take any damage. One of the things that I would like you to consider is blocking. You can exit sniper mode by blocking, and it is often much safer to exit it by blocking than by dodging because a lot of the times you're going to be in sniper mode up until the very last second when a boss aoe is coming your way or a boss attack is coming your way and you're like okay now is the time that i need to get out of sniper mode because sniper mode again is going to be your bread and butter if you were thinking that you were jumping into oigan to just play like this you can but that's not very efficient okay let me just make that part perfectly clear so if there's a boss AoE coming your way, consider trying to block instead of dodging. You can also dodge, but because of the limited FOV when you're in sniper mode, it gets a little bit tricky. The depth perception gets a little bit tricky as well. So keep that in mind. Blocking is a lot of times going to save your life, including even in mechanics where you wouldn't think it would. Like, for instance, the very final boss of the game. I'm not going to get into any spoilers, but he has a breath attack. And his breath attack is beast. You can block that. You can straight up block it. You don't have to dodge it, you just block it, and you'll be fine. And you'll take zero damage, which is pretty friggin' spiffy, if you ask me. Now, let's talk about Oigen's link time, because every character has, like, their own mechanic whenever it comes to link time. I'm gonna go ahead here into practice settings, and I'm gonna turn on link 100%. Oigen's link mechanic is that he is able to basically throw grenades, and the grenades instantly explode. So that is pretty cool because you can just go ahead, shoot this, link time, and now your best damage is going to be just throw grenades. Like, look at this. We are now starting the Oigan space program. We're going to send this dummy to the friggin' moon, baby. To the moon you go! <laughs> but yeah, the grenades instantly explode whenever you're in link time, so your best damage is just like, yeet grenades nonstop, deal all the damage. Friggin' fantastic, right? Those are the basics of Oigen. You throw your you throw your stuff around. Now, let's talk about skills. When it comes to the skills that Oigen has, let me show you guys the skills that I personally have equipped right here. We have Venom Grenade, Armor Piercing Round, Intercept, and Paralyzing Bullet. This is what I use nine times out of ten. And I understand different people are going to want to have different skills for your Oigen builds. Feel free to do that. 
this is what I tend to use. And sometimes I will swap Paralyzing Bullet or Intercept with some other skills like maybe Healing Bullet or Disruptor. Sumrock and Detonator, I don't even consider those at all. I've done a ton of testing. Maybe somebody can prove me wrong. Maybe somebody can do some special build or whatever with a very specific set of skills that they can squeeze out more damage out of Detonator and Sumrock. But from my testing, these are usually DPS losses. They're fun to use, but they just don't deal the damage to make up for the amount of time that you're just sitting there charging when you could have just been throwing three grenades and detonating them, and that is usually a better option. Now, when it comes to healing shot, I feel like I don't really have to show you guys this skill. You can see it in the video right there. It's a healing shot. You can aim it at a, a, a friend and shoot it, or you can shoot it yourself. This is more something that I would consider for Oigen if I wanted to have him as a half support, as in just a support that deals a ton of damage and every now and then shoots a healing bullet. Like, that would be okay. But for me, myself, using it, I very rarely use it. Like, the boss will need to be damn near immune to paralyzing bullet for me to use this. The other skill that I will sometimes swap in is Disruptor. Disruptor fires these three shots that with four shots that seek foes but that's not the important part because the damage of this skill is not great what this is for is if you happen to have an enemy that has a buff that you need to get rid of like there's a very specific case that i can remember in the last dungeon there's a, an enemy that has hella regen and he'll just regen through all of your attacks you can pop this bad boy on him boom get rid of his regen buff and just kill him right so this is more about removing buffs from bosses than anything else and that's kind of like one of your other options now i can show you very briefly here how sumrock and detonator work in case you guys want to take a look because you know i know that a lot of people are going to be tempted i was tempted because i mean sumrock is a friggin laser beam Another thing that these two attacks will do is they will detonate your grenades, which is pretty friggin' cool if you ask me. So, like, you throw a grenade, right? And then you can do one of these attacks. And detonates the grenade, and you're dealing all of this damage, and it's fantastic, right? But fundamentally, you will still be dealing more damage if you're just throwing grenades. At least that's my personal experience, right? Same thing with the detonator. You can charge up the detonator and get yourself a really beefy hit, right? But look at how long you're sitting here charging. That's the problem. So even though you're dealing over a million damage in one shot, ultimately, you're sitting there standing still doing almost nothing which for starters is very risky as oigan because you're already standing still you're basically a sitting duck waiting to get pummeled by the boss whether using this or the sumrock and at the same time you could have just been one two three move in between and then boom and at the end of the day all the testing that i've done so far says that this is more damage than this but it is fun and I should also point out that maybe during your story progression or as you're reaching the mid game, you can actually find a use for these skills and they're fun, right? You can have fun with the character. Don't just have to min max and be all that, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend those in an end game scenario. So now let's talk about the skills that I do use, which is poison bullet. Now, Poison Bullet is a fantastic skill because it's a fire and forget. So you just fire the skill, boom, forget about it, don't even worry about it. It's now doing its thing for a little bit. And uh, another cool thing about these skills that I use is that they will detonate grenades. So if there was a grenade stuck on the boss, it would actually detonate. And the reason why this is important is because sometimes you'll stick a grenade on a boss and then you'll be shooting at it and it won't detonate because maybe it's like inside the boss's hitbox and your shots are only hitting the surface level of the boss. This happens sometimes. In those situations, you can use a skill like, say, for instance, our dodge skill here of intercept because it AOEs. So it detonates the grenades and it has a little bit of an AOE effect. So it'll actually penetrate the boss's skin a little bit enough to get to those grenades. So if you're struggling, to detonate grenades on enemies you can basically just use a skill and bob is your uncle now paralyzing bullet is very self-explanatory it is a bullet that paralyzes your enemies you can hold the skill button which in my case is cross in order to charge it up and keep it so that you can aim at the boss whenever you want there's no limit for how long you can keep this you don't really charge the skill to be more effective you just kind of like hold the skill in order to make sure that you land it so 
Once you land it, boss is paralyzed. A very important thing when you're using paralysis, do not use it after a break. If you use paralysis after a break, everybody will hate you because you're going to interrupt the break state of the boss. You're going to paralyze it, which means you're going to waste your paralysis. The boss is going to get up faster. Everybody loses damage. What you want to use paralyzing bullet on is whenever a boss is switching between phases. I will show you guys an example a little bit further ahead in the video. Now, usually when I'm starting the engagement on a boss, I'm going to do poison bullet into armor piercing bullet or armor piercing round, whatever it's called, the one where there's an AOE falling from the sky, because the AOE falling from the sky is also going to detonate my grenades. And what that means is that you get to throw more grenades before you have to manually detonate them with the shot, which is fantastic. So let me show you. You open up with the poison, you follow through with the AOE, you go into sniper mode, you start throwing grenades. And sometimes one of these will hit, as you can see right there, one of them hit, detonated the grenade. Sometimes if you're lucky, more of them will hit, and those are basically free grenades that you'll get right at the beginning of a fight. Usually, if the boss is big enough, you might even be aiming towards the boss's back to ensure that your grenades get detonated by the, the thing that you're shooting, right? But yeah, those are the skills that I use, those are the skills that I recommend. Another special effect of the intercept skill is if you dodge an attack at the last second with it, you gain a little bit of a start heart effect, which is nice, but it's not really the main reason why I use it. And again, you can swap paralyzing bullet and uh, intercept if you want to, because these are not super important skills for me. I just use them for sometimes, I mean, paralyzing bullet kind of is, but if you don't like paralyzing bullet, you can use healing bullet, heal your teammates, do whatever you want, use disruptor, doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, just trying to explain to you. Most damage, three grenades, detonate, go. That's the way to get to it when it comes to Eugen, and that's pretty much the explanation of all of Eugen's skills. Now, another thing is naturally going to be, what about weapons? Let's talk weapons. Which weapons do I recommend when it comes to Eugen? So we're going to go into the collection here. Each of these weapons is going to have a very specific purpose. So we have the Dryzee. Dryzee is the weapon that you begin with. This is actually a really good weapon because it has a lot of mastery HP nodes. Now, as I've explained in pretty much all of my Grand Blue Fantasy videos, these nodes are active even when you're not using the weapon. So if I was to know what I know now and I was about to start playing Eugen, during the story, I probably would not have crafted a Leviathan Muzzle, even though Leviathan Muzzle is the critical uh, hit rate as well as critical damage weapon. It is a very important weapon to get later down the line, but it is not something that you need to get if you're min-maxing, because one of the things that you definitely want to get is a ton of HP for endgame so that you're not getting one shot. And these 5,000 hit points right here, golden, beautiful. Even though once you get to your Terminus weapon, they're not necessarily the best thing to have. But, you know, we'll talk more about that once I get to the Terminus weapon and some of the things that I've done with the Terminus weapon. So, if you are choosing which weapon to play, you can fundamentally play whatever weapon you want, right? If you want to craft a Leviathan muzzle, go right ahead. Me, personally, I would put everything that I have into leveling the Drysy while I'm going through the story, because the story is not that hard to deal with anyways, and this will ensure that you have at least one of these weapons that has a ton of HP nodes, good to go by the time you get the end game. The other weapon that I would recommend is this one. As soon as you can craft the Clarion, that is the weapon that I would do. This is your weakness damage, which is whenever you shoot a monster's weak spot, you deal more damage. But another thing that this weapon has is it quite simply has, from my experience, the highest damage out of all of the weapons. And this is pretty much true for, for all of the all of the characters. However, there are a couple of weapons that will surpass it in the long run, such as your Terminus weapons, which for Eugen is the Draconic Fire, as well as your Ascendant, uh, Ascension weapon, which for Eugen is the AK-4A. So this weapon, once you ascend it all the way at Sierra Carte through the Ascension system of the game, this will deal more damage than the Clarion, but it is going to take you a very long time to upgrade. Whereas the Clarion, you upgrade all the way, you have all of that damage already there, and you don't have to put in as much effort. Eventually, as you play through the game, you'll want to obviously unlock all of them and get all of these mastery nodes, because these mastery nodes are going to benefit you passively, regardless of what weapon you have equipped. 
And in terms of your final weapon, it should be the Draconic Fire, the Terminus weapon, because quite simply it has the most damage cap, it has mechanics to deal a crap ton of damage, it's just a beast of a weapon. I'm pretty sure that the Terminus weapon is going to be the best weapon for every single character in the game, but I'm not ready to make that claim because I'm not an expert in every single character, but I can assure you, when it comes to Eugen, this is the best weapon. Unless somebody can come up again with some crazy ass build that uses something else. This weapon just removes a ton of damage cap from you. Which is fan friggin tastic because you're going to be hitting that damage cap so often with Eugen that it is absolutely disgusting. So this is the weapon to go for. This should be your first weapon to really level up all the way if you want to min-max. Again, feel free to level up whatever weapon you want. If you want to know my opinion, go for the Clarion. Level it up all the way. Use that. Your Oigan's going to be a beast. Drysy should be your second one to make sure that you get HP to survive mechanics. And then I'd probably go for the Leviathan Muzzle to get yourself some critical damage in case you're not hitting the damage cap yet. And then feel free to get the other ones as you see fit. But this is just like the fastest way to get a bunch of damage out of him. Clarion, and also the cheapest way to get a bunch of damage out of him, Clarion. So, you know, as you are leveling up, Drysy, and then once you get to the end of the game or whenever this weapon becomes available to craft, craft this one and level it up all the way. Those are my recommendations when it comes to Eugen's weapons. Now, uh, let's talk about Masteries. Obviously, as with every character, you want to get your full Mastery Tree. This is pretty much a no-brainer. Uh, when it comes to Eugen, I pretty much prioritized the passive nodes rather than the skill nodes because, like I said, I don't really care that much about his skills. If I was going to put points into something, it would be Enhanced Venom Grenade and whatever is Enhanced for Armor Piercing Rounds because those are the two most important skills that he has for me. Obviously, you can also get the other two like Paralyzing Bullet and Intercept, but I prioritized passive nodes same thing for defense passive nodes is the most important thing so that's what i did anything that increases your defense get those first but eventually get everything and then finally when it comes to your overmastery, most important one normal attack damage cap up this is probably going to be the case for every single character now in my case i have normal attack damage cap up 20 percent and critical hit rate up 20 percent so i was very lucky with these rolls even my skybound art cap is up by 16 percent but then i got that crappy roll of healing cap up which kind of sucks but you know i'll take the good with the bad this is a very good roll so most important one of all by far Normal attack damage cap up. That's one you want to focus on getting. So once you get that at 20%, then you're kind of like free. Okay, let's stop rolling. We're good. Even if you don't get critical rate attack up, you can you can get that with a little bit of a sigil adjustment, right? Now let's talk about the sigils, which is what ends up making our build. Naturally, for a weapon, we have the Draconic Fire, and it is at plus 77. Some of you guys might be wondering, Rurikon, why is your Draconic Fire at plus 77 as opposed to, you know, plus 99, which is the max that you can take Mirage Munitions to? And the reasoning behind that is my hit points. You see, your, your Terminus weapon is going to give you a skill called Catastrophe. And Catastrophe gives you plus 50% attack and 100% damage cap so long as your HP is below 45,000. Now, I'm also using Crab Vestment Returns, which increases my HP by 20% because I want to get that 10% damage reduction so that I can survive a couple of more hits without being absolutely obliterated, right? So therefore, that is going to put me above 4,500 However, if you then cut back on some Mirage Munitions, in this case you put up 77, you're going to be hunky-dory because you're going to be sitting at 44,995, which is perfect. You have a decent chunk of HP, you have a decent chunk of defense, and you're also um, not losing that much damage by reducing 22 Mirage Munitions, okay? Let's talk about the sigils themselves. We have War Elemental over here. The way that you get the sigil is you need to get Curios. Curios drop from like a bunch of different quests throughout the game. So just questing throughout the game should be netting you Curios. You go to like Seed Hollow, whatever, reveal those Curios and get lucky. This is an RNG drop. Sorry, not my fault. You know, I actually have two of them. I'm very sorry. It is what it is, right? War Elemental, this is important. 
Then you have critical hit rate up five plus, which also comes with stamina. This is to put my critical rate at 94%. It's not 100%. You can make it 100% if you want to. Me, I'm fairly comfortable at 94. This is fine. It's pretty close to 100. The few hits that I'm not hitting critically are fine. It's not going to tank my damage by that much. I'm usually MVP in most of the matches that I jump into, so it's fine. <clears throat> now, you're going to be wanting a ton of damage cap because, I mean, even with all of this damage cap, I'm at damage cap. Now, understand, my sigils are not really that min-maxed yet because I'm trying to get sigils that are 5 plus before I start spending the materials to upgrade them. Because otherwise, I just feel like I'm wasting materials. And to be honest, I don't really need the, you know, I don't need to upgrade these ones at this point. If you really want to min-max them, feel free to upgrade the crap out of your damage cap 5 sigils. Go right ahead. I upgraded one, and that's because it comes with uplift, which is pretty good. So this is what I have. My critical hit rate comes with stamina. Not really a big deal. Stamina is not really something that I go for, but whatever. Steel Nerves over here ensures that whenever we have um, Stout Heart, we are going to take less damage. So this is damage reduction. So with Steel Nerves plus Crab Vestment Returns, we're sitting at like 21% damage reduction or whatever. I don't know if they do it additively or multiplicatively, but you know, there's basically a skill that is giving me 11% less damage and then there's another skill that is giving me 10 percent damage cut i think this might be multiplicatively but either way it is a nice reduction of damage that's why steel nerves is there also comes with guts which allows us to survive sometimes we have the start heart you can craft this one over at zero carte this is going to be something that probably most people want to have by end game because it, you know it basically prevents you getting knocked around all over the place and you can kind of drain through some of the the hits that you're going to be getting which is another thing that i have so yeah another damage cap another damage cap another damage cap fairly self-explanatory basically you just put in a bunch of damage cap because with the amount of mastery that i have and all of the weapon mastery nodes unlocked you just hit damage cap almost instantly so what you really need is just more damage cap then you got precise resilience this i only have this because it comes with drain so in here just imagine that there's a drain five instead of precise resilience just that precise resilience comes for free veterans insight this increases your grenade, grenade damage by like a hundred percent so this one you also get from sierra carte he has another one which is veterans vision increases the rate at which you fire but from my testing, you're better off throwing three grenades and then shooting. And for that, you don't need to fire that fast. So you're fine. So this is the build that I'm personally running when it comes to Eugen. And now I'm going to show you guys a very quick example as to how I play them. Just in case you guys are curious. We're going to jump in. We're going to go kill the Red Dragon because it's a fairly uh, fast fight. And it should also showcase how I kind of like position. And I'll give you guys a couple of tips as to how you can play with this character. So let's go ahead, quest counter. Let's go into proud, get the red boy, and jump in. I know my team is not still fully optimized. I'm still going through a process where I'm picking and choosing which characters I actually want on my team, and I haven't finalized that process just yet. It's still in flux, okay? So we have the dragon coming in. One of the first things you're going to want to do is analyze which position the dragon is going to go to and position yourself accordingly in a position that you can actually go into sniper mode. But before you jump into sniper mode, the dragon's going to attack somebody. There it is. You're going to pop your poison. Then you're going to pop the armor piercing rounds, go into sniper mode, throw grenades at him. Pray that some of those explode using that, which it did. And now three grenades, blast him. There it is. Now, you should focus this particular dragon on the head because he has uh, a breakable part. His horns can break. Ooh. See, we didn't really get knocked around there because we have start heart, so it's whatever. He's going into overdrive. Going to go... Oh, I missed the paralysis. But see, that's a good time for you to do paralysis. You just shoot the paralysis on there, and that will give you a couple of openings while he's going into overdrive. We're going to keep popping him. I'm going to readjust using the skill. See, that's how you use the skill. Now, when it comes to this, you're just going to do the mechanic. You're going to wait for the mechanic to resolve. Boink. Invincibility. Try to... I usually use this one to practice the invincibility frames. 
I am a little bit rusty because I haven't fought this guy in a long time. But yeah, I practiced this to get my... Ooh! That's a lot of damage. And he's back down. Let's go ahead and throw a couple more grenades. I don't even think we're going to be able to get SPAs off. Maybe we will, though. There's the break. Oh man, I hate slow during breaks. It's so bad. Did I even bust up his face yet? That's a link attack. Nope, his face is not broken yet. Let's go ahead and see if we can work on that. Bruh, stop turning around. Oh man. See right there how I blocked that? It didn't really hit me, but if it had hit me, I would have blocked it. Rather than risking a dodge, which I could have still gotten hit by and missed the perfect dodge, just block it. It's fine. Sometimes you'll even get the perfect block. There it is. That's another blast of the face. Oh, we have our skill. Let's go ahead and pop it. And we broke the horn, which means now I can just fire wherever I want. See right there, my dodge thing, my dodge uh, muscle memory kicked in. You're going to overdrive? Well, I'm going to blast you. See, this is a good time to blast them is whenever they go into overdrive before they start executing mechanics. Because then you get free openings on them. It's absolutely fantastic. I'm going to pop a poison on him as well while we're at it. Notice that I never really lock on. Usually the um, AI of the game is fairly good at aiming your skills for you whenever you're trying to pop off skills. Not always, Payate, I'm looking at you, you bastard. Trying to land skills on you is an absolute nightmare. Even if you miss sticking the grenade onto your target, you can still just plop the grenades in the vicinity and you can shoot them. Because see, if you shoot a grenade that's on the ground, it still explodes and it still deals damage. But you know, that's Oigen for you. Uh, in my opinion, this is uh, one of the really powerful characters in the game. A lot of people are actually complaining that Oigen might be too powerful. I expect him to potentially get a nerf. Uh, I hope he doesn't, because I really like playing him, but I'm also preparing other characters that I want to play, like I'm probably going to be preparing Vayne, because I think Vayne is really funny. I already have Percival pretty much prepared. I just need to get, like, his weapon and stuff. But, yeah, that's Oigen. Hopefully this helped you understand Oigen. Hopefully you'll enjoy playing Oigen for yourself. And let me know in the comment section if you have any questions and which character you'd like me to cover next, even though... There's a lot of characters that I'm not playing, and I'm probably not going to be making guides for those. So, anyways, thank you all very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay strong. Stay safe. Peace out.